I'm Tracy Bangster with today's Record News Watch. There are new faces on the Monticello Village Board. Newly elected trustees Doug Solomon and Jill Ware took their seats during last night's reorganization meeting. But uh, despite the changes, didn't take long for the arguing to uh, start up again between uh, trustees on the board and a defiant Mayor Gordon Jenkins, beginning with the mayor's complaints with the amended meeting agenda. Let me read this. Let me read this. Man. Don't throw something down my throat now, because this is all this is all new to me. I'm just saying. Don't. I, I, I come sitting here all the time with news board board addendums to the agenda. And I see it. Doesn't, it doesn't matter if you got three or four votes. You're not going to sit here and throw something down my throat. Over the objections of Mayor Jenkins, the newly reconfigured board appointed a former village manager, Ray Nargisian, to his old post until a permanent manager is hired. New board members Solomon and Ware ran as opponents to Jenkins, and after the meeting, Solomon said he hopes for smoother sailing going forward. Things settle down, we get a few meetings under our belts. I think things will be okay. It's just, you know, I, I don't expect tonight to go as smooth as glass. <laughs> Solomon and Ware have replaced trustees who had uh, sided with Jenkins. Another change made last night. The new board voted to hire Michael David Davidoff as uh, Monticello Village attorney replacing a firm that had been handpicked by Jenkins. Back on March 30th, Sullivan County Sheriff's deputies and Woodridge Village Police joined forces in a raid at a residence on Maple Avenue in Woodridge, where two people were allegedly distributing as much as $10,000 a week worth of heroin. Jeffrey Hershewski, a resident at the address, along with Allison Killian of Liberty, were charged then with a criminal possession with intent to sell. At the time, authorities said more arrests were expected as part of their continuing investigation into the heroin dealing in the Woodridge area. And this morning, police made two more heroin-related arrests, this time at this house on Glen Wild Road. This morning's search warrant was part of a continuing investigation into the sale of heroin in and around the village of Woodridge. Uh, we executed a search warrant at this location, which is 1176 Glen Wild Road. In, the, in Woodridge with the Woodridge Police Department this morning at approximately 7.30 and arrested two subjects and recovered approximately a half an ounce of uh, pure heroin. It appears to be the same type of heroin, pure heroin not yet cut and typically uh, heroin is packaged in the metropolitan area and transported to Sullivan County for sale. This is a new trend that we haven't seen before. Keep checking here at Record Online for the latest on the raid and for information concerning the pair taken into custody. The stage is set for what figures to be an emotional Orange County legislative meeting tomorrow. Lawmakers will consider the latest proposal to transfer control of the county's Valley View nursing home to a local development corporation for the purpose of selling it to a private operator. Public hearing on the issue last Friday triggered calls to keep Valley View in private hands. Officials with the county's CSEA union said uh, they've offered to freeze their wages for three years as a way to try to convince legislators to keep Valley View in county hands. Legislator Michael Anagnostakis, a Valley View sale opponent, was predicting a close vote. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, uh, my opinion is it's going to be by one vote. It's going to be 11-10, one way or the other, and I don't know right now how it's going to turn. The quality of care there has to be maintained for the citizens of Orange County, the seniors of Orange County, and the bottom line is the savings to the county just isn't that much because of all the cost cutting that we've put into place. So county Executive Steve Newhouse and others in the legislature say uh, putting the operation of Valley View in private hands makes the most financial sense for the financially stressed county. The full legislature will take up the issue at 4.30 Wednesday afternoon. State police say they severely beat a man and stripped him of his clothing during a robbery and gang assault back in October in Circleville. One of the men posted a video of the attack on YouTube. Two of the three alleged suspects, 26-year-old 20, uh, Naheem Akbar and 21-year-old Karina Montalvo, both of Middletown, were arrested shortly after the incident. But 43-year-old Augustin Torres of Middletown was able to avoid capture until Monday when investigators tracked him down in the Bronx. Torres faces charges of first-degree robbery and first-degree gang assault and is now being held on $25,000 bail in Orange County Jail. Charges against Montalvo and Akbar are pending in Orange County Court.
And police say it's yet another example of why it's important for parents to monitor the sites their children visit on the internet. A Pennsylvania man has been sentenced to up to 16 years in prison after he lured a Pike County girl to a hotel in Westfall Township. That is where 39-year-old Frank Bianco of Tannersville, PA, molested the 14-year-old girl. Police say he had uh, been communicating with her in a chat room. Bianco had uh, pleaded guilty to a charge of aggravated indecent assault. When he is released, he will have to uh, register his address and place of employment and will be designated a sexually violent predator under Megan's law. The rain and much of the cloud cover moved out earlier today and it means we will be enjoying more sunny weather in the days ahead. Tomorrow will be partly sunny with the highs Wednesday in the upper 50s and temperatures will again top out around 60 degrees on Thursday under a mostly sunny sky. You'll stay informed when you start your day with the Times-Herald Record and you'll stay connected to breaking news all day long right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.